Hey YouTube, this is uh, Full Game Prometheus giving you another defensive tip. Uh, guys, I want to actually show you a defense that uh, I have been using recently online. It's been causing a lot of issues with, with my opponents where they really can't read it correctly. And what's great about it, it has a built-in blitz that everybody knows about out of the AA gap. So I'm going to be using Nickel Dog 2, and as you can see right here, uh, at the very bottom, it shows you all the different defenses you get. You can you can use this from, uh, but it is a it's a fairly easy defense to set up. My zone drops, I'll put my flats at 25s, my curl flats at five, and I don't really do much with my hooks. I leave them in default. Uh, but basically, with this defense, I'm using um, the u the slot cornerback as my primary guy. So I do want to have some guy that's using a lot of. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of good change of direction. Preferably, I want to go ahead and take my star defender, if I got a defensive back that's a star defender, and user him because they usually will get those animations uh, for interceptions. But what this is is the typical Mabel defense out there that everybody has been using with, with you know, with 3-3-5 wide defenses and other defenses. Uh, but what I like about it is that you know you've got a very effective blitz in your back pocket. Um, and uh, it just forces people, it just gives them a different look uh, than what they're normally seeing. So how I set this up, I'm going to take my left end rusher, my right end usher, rusher, and put them in curl flats or seam flats. Curl flats, they go out uh, towards the sideline a little bit quicker. Seam flats, they'll actually play the seam a little bit and then come down to the flat. So they will give up a flat. They want The curl flat will go out to the flat more directly where a seam flat will play the seam if they don't have a pass responsibility. Now, uh, my sub linebackers, typically what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put my safeties in there because I want to have speed at my sub linebackers because one of them I'm going to drop into deep middle. Um, and put them in a deep middle over the top so because I want to use my slot, uh, my slot corner down into the box and it allows me to attack the run and also just try to take away my opponent's initial reads. The second guy, what I'm going to do is I'm either going to go ahead and put him in a spy, I'll leave him in his little hook zone, or I'll put him in, uh, I'll put him in a man assignment to basically take away my opponent's reads. So what's really good about this particular play this play is that it, it's 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 fairly simple to set up you know i i've been in some situations where i've been playing games i don't set it up correctly uh but it, it is a it's a very straightforward setup type defense and you always have that nickel double a gap blitz that you can jump into if you really want to so that's what's good about it is that anybody that's been playing madden long enough they know that the double a gap blitz is avail that, that you have access to it so generally they're going to block a little bit more and it gives you a chance to go ahead and really attack them so once again really set up i've got the spy out there for he can he tries to go out and right here actually he has a nice little dot but because he throws into three defenders i'm gonna be able to knock that ball down so here setting this defense up once again uh, i've got the seam flats out there um, set up i've got a spy uh, and I didn't pass commit, and that was a reason why a defender didn't come out there and play that. So sometimes you will get hit with some flat sideline plays to the long side of the field. Sometimes those bubbles will actually get you know will t get taken away. So that's all right. I want him to settle for everything underneath because it it's just going to make it harder for him to get things over the middle. So the deep halves by the safeties are really good because it gives you a lot of support. But if you don't have this upset correctly you got to be concerned about over the middle. Now, as I, I showed you before, if you only picked up five yards, you'll see another, uh, another uh, series of gameplay. You're going to see me either shooting the gap or basically he can't really get around the edge uh, with, with, with the defense. So if you use a better style defense, uh, it, you'll get more block shots with this, with this setup. Here I actually put a double sky blue black. Actually, I, I, was, I was making adjustments right there. I saw I was in the wrong defense. And this guy's making adjustments, so he's giving me plenty of time. So you can see right here, he does get a pretty good block uh, blocking right there to get it up. But it's still it's my responsibility as a user to, 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 to be the primary run support and shoot the gaps correctly. So um, I haven't really figured out my, ga my gaps right correctly yet, but um, it's it's that nice seven-man front that you have up in front, and you're using a fast player, and it could be your corner that you're going to be using, because you could take your best corner that's got a really good change of direction, and you could put him in that slot position, especially if he's pretty stout. But uh, I'm using Honey Badger in this gameplay, because he's, he's the best defensive back on the team. Right here, once again, it goes back at it. My guys don't come out. But he is a little bubble, but I assure you that it's it's frustrating him because he's got to settle for everything underneath. So right here, I set it up once again. I actually 
I, I squinched my line a bit, a little bit to show him the blitz. Um, but I didn't really hit this guy with the blitz, but right there I spy the guy and actually throws over the top of my spy, and I'm able to go and pick him off with a honey badger. So he, he tested me. That's one of the reasons why you want to use one of your better defenders um, in that type of situation. So the cool thing, too, is that if you don't get to the adjustments in the middle of with your with your sub linebackers, you can always leave them in those those hook zones, and those, those hook zones play pretty effectively for you. Right here, he's got nowhere to go with the ball. He actually has to get rid of it. Back with the same play once again. It's, I left the hook zones up here. Hook zone actually followed this out route right here, so I had a double team out there. I haven't really seen uh, exactly how that works, but it's probably because I have the hook zones uh, at the falls right here. So in, in this type of situation, once again, setting things up, now I go spy on the other side, and I'm going to take my uh, sub linebacker and put him on uh, the other defender out there. And he was throwing it out, so he's he's looking for some of the weaknesses in the, in this defense, and he's he's doing a pretty effective job. But if you take a look at the score up top, 21 to three, he's struggling. I'm getting the ball back. I'm scoring a lot of points. He's he's turning the ball over when he gets a little bit close closer in the end zone. He, he really had to, to to settle with moving with his quarterback. And right here, he takes a shot up top. I play the ball, get an interception, and that's pretty much adios for that game right there. So able to go into the next game play you're going to see this where i'm using this defense again it's another player not the best player but a pretty good player so going against the guy using the cowboys right here setting up the defense once again and i'm just going to motion my guys over showing them the blitz now i've got basically deep blue over the middle because he's got that trip set my responsibility is to go over the trip set he actually runs the ball as you can see right here he pauses a little bit and tries to take up and he just he runs into um, just a two-yard gainer so most players if they're getting two yards per carry they're really not going to keep running the ball so if you can keep someone down the two yards one yards per carry they're going to basically dish the run here's a heavy set where he's a single back set, you think he might actually go ahead and do the run. And once again, because I'm using a better defense with San Francisco, get a nice little block shot right there and actually stop the run. So a third and six situation. This is the first series. This is the first series that, that we're running that he's running against. Um, right here he comes out of a, a basically the typical bunch formation. And I'm just setting up uh, basically a deep blue. I've got a spy over the middle to make sure he doesn't scramble out. And he doesn't make uh, correct reads. He actually, he just misses misses that out route. And as a result, he actually gets in the fourth and sixth. And he's forced to punt. So I'll take it. You know, if, if he can't make reads correctly, he can't do things over the middle. And he's forced to play the sidelines. And I've got a lot of defenders playing the sidelines. I'm going to win in the game every single time. So that's what I love about this particular defense. And you've always got a quick blitz. Like, to set the blitz up, all you have to do is just go ahead and blitz your linebackers. And you've got six people going. And he's going to have to really adjust to it quickly. So that, that's something I really haven't been leveraging a lot in, in this, this defense. I'm using a lot of just this coverage defense, but I've always got a blitz. I've got a very effective blitz I can have in my back pocket that I can use against my opponent. So right here, back three wide, re wide receiver sets. He's got trips off the left. Uh, it's a Y flex. Once again, same basic defense right here with a spy over the middle. That was a nice little dot. He actually found the seam perfectly and hit it. But most players don't find those seams. They're not going to do that. And then if he keeps going back to that seam, I can start reading that correctly, and I can always adjust. I can man up that wide receiver with one of my defenders. But you can see right here, I put a yellow zone out there. I actually took away that seam. Then he comes right across, and as a result, he checks it down. And that was a really good read by him to check it down like that. But you could see that, you know, people, when they, when they see weaknesses of defense, they're going to try to go back after and after and after it again. And you can take away their reads where they're going to go with it. So uh, even though he, he, he hit the guy on the sideline, it actually struggled. Now here's another cool thing about this is that you can do different variations of this defense. So right here, I go into a cover four version of it. I had pressure off the edge. He got rid of the ball correctly to the running back um, on that, but you, you can see he barely got that ball off. He really didn't have any kind of a, you know, it was a very fast read for him. So back to uh this and i think i'm going to hit him with a bit blitz here or, or just going to go with the base defense um so in, in this type of situation now i go with uh, basically man version of this blitz which is the, is the uh whole one version of it and this is going to kind of mess up his reads a little bit i pull my guy down uh and right here i've got double edge pressure off the edge because he has to send so many people out because i've got so much coverage he doesn't really know what to do with it so here i jump into cover two just a standard cover two mess up his reads a little bit he tries to hit me with levels over the middle and i've got a guy down there uh playing uh, playing the spot so 
Another interception. I, I, I end up picking a win. Now this guy um, is actually um, a very good player. He's, he's ranked in the top thousand on regs. Knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, so the nickel double A gap once again. This is a heavy set. And, you know, this type of set where you're going to see someone's going to be running a lot. So this is uh, basically strong close. I think this guy had like a, a a stock, like a very stock playbook. So he's actually doing a stretch play. But you can see uh, the uh, 49ers have a really stout defense. As a result, they come down and play that. So, and, and you know, huddles into a third and eight type of situation. Trying to catch me off guard. Uh, does the, the little sprint play. Um, and as a result here, I get a good hand. I hit him while he's releasing the ball. I get a good animation. And he's going to have to, this guy actually in, in the first series, uh, me, or the score being tied, I think what he does is he actually has to settle, punting the ball, not trying to give me some free points. So this guy's a very intelligent player. You never give someone uh, a, an easy three in a situation where the game is scored. There's no reason to do that. So he actually punts the ball away from me. Um, and that's, you know, that's smart, intelligent football. So, but you could see that this defense actually, he's, it's a defense this guy actually struggles with uh, throughout the rest of the great gameplay. So uh, curl flats, you want to have those purples um, and you have, you have your, your, uh, your corners on the outside. They're playing their deep, uh, deep halves going up to 25 yards. You've got your deep halves with your safeties, your middle, using your, your middle slot defender over the top. Right here, he goes to another heavy, like a under uh, under center type formation. Tries a, uh, a play action. He's got a scrambling route right here, and um, you can see I can I defend that. Pretty much locked it up. So the flat was taken away, and then my guy actually went up and played the other sideline because I had a star defender out there. So second and ten situation. Uh, in this situation, we're going to go ahead and still wait. He comes out a four wide spread formation right here. So he's got basically four wide got my full box here I've got my guys and I think I go ahead and just I've got uh, two guys out there on the, on the left he's scrambling with his quarterback he's just waiting for the defense to break down so that was one of the best uh, adjustments he did but that's why you have to throw that spy up instead of a yellow zone uh, so he actually quick snap me but a spy is going to be a little bit better because most players they just they're, they're, they have to wait for the routes to develop and they can't they can't just make quick fast reads they've got to wait for things to develop so that's what i love about it and, and also you still have that threat of that massive blitz that you can actually attack your opponent with so back to the spy again i have a drop zone in this area um and right here actually pops me right over the middle uh for that particular reason i actually just got pulled out of, out of the uh, play i think i had to play over the top i think he just hit me over the top in that type of situation so i had to, i had to go ahead and play the seam make sure he didn't pop me over the seam and, and he actually had a really good route development and this guy is no joke he's a good player he knows exactly what he's doing so he actually he he was you know trying to to, to decipher the, the this play correctly so trips off to the left he's got a wide flex He's got the running back over. Now I go with a double mid read over the middle. I think I want to make an adjustment. Back to the run again. Actually, nice little run because I had the two guys dropping back in the zones. Uh, so if I had a spy out there, it probably would have been a little bit more stout in defense. Uh, so right here, second and inches situation, two minutes left in the first in that first quarter. And he goes into a single back, a Y flex close formation. So you know this guy wants to run. In this type of situation so I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the same defense right here and you can see I missed I missed it it's my responsibility to shoot the gap so if you guys do better at shooting the gap you can get in there and actually stop these guys so well, here's another thing um, you know I can I can jump into like a cover four type coverage and then basically go ahead and, and stop his run and still have a four high shell and a man up guy in the back end side so this is one thing that's great about this defense is you can make a quick adjustment like this. Just play a little bit slightly different, slightly different coverage right here. He throws right into a guy that just comes shooting out to the, into the zone. And as a, a result, he actually gets intercepted. So guys, this is a defense I'll be playing around with. I'm actually going to be working on a different version of it, which is going to be, I think is going to be a little bit more effective. I think I'm going to have better pressure and a better way to mix it up. But if you guys like this type of stuff and me showing gameplay, go ahead and just hit the like button and make comments below. So thank you for your support. Until next time.